All right, it's feeding time for these bikers. So the um, correct pronunciation of these bikers are called bishirs. And um, these bishirs are actually, um, they're primitive fishes and they are um, they date back to hundreds of millions of years ago. So they've been around uh, for a while. And I just recently got these Bashirs from my tenant who moved out of my rental property. And, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the family couldn't take care of them anymore. It was actually the um, the husband um, that was taking care of them, and um, he uh, was uh, he uh, actually my tenant moved out of my house, my rental property uh, about a week later. He was hospitalized uh, with a brain infection, so um, the wife and kids did not know how to take care of these fishes so um, if you watched my last um, fish tank update um, you know I didn't have this many fishes so now you know I got six plecos and that being the biggest one right there um, and I got six um, of these Bashirs now so um, I'm going to go ahead and start feeding them. This, this is the shrimp I had cut up. And this shrimp was actually left over from my last um, fishing trip. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and feed them so that it doesn't go to waste. So let's see these. The shears. There's one guy eating, and I don't know what it is, but one when one of them starts eating, like the other ones, they recognize food is around, and they start coming to the feeding area. So I've only had these bashirs for only two weeks. And um, you know they're 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 pretty smart. But um, yeah, I can't sustain cutting shrimp up every day to feed them. So um, for two weeks I've been doing this, and I'm running out of shrimp. So. I'm going to have to uh, stop by Petco tomorrow and pick up um, one of those um, pellets, those carnivore pellets from uh, Hikari. Um, I think they're called massivores or carnivore pellets. And yeah, I just can't, I can't sustain, I can't be doing this every day cutting up shrimp feeding them get lazy so you'll start to see that they're all they somehow they just know that it's feeding time and they start coming around so some of you may think that it's not a good idea to have plecos w along with um, these uh, bashirs. Again, these are rescued fishes. So, uh, you know, it was either I rescue them or the, um, the wife of the owner uh, or, you know, the, the, the wife of the guy that was taking care of these bashirs she was going to actually dump them onto the ground and let them die. So, 
um, you know I didn't know much about these um, these uh, Bashirs until I got them and I did some research on them um, they seem to be interesting um, yeah it's one of these one of the few Bashirs are one of the few species that actually have lungs and gills um, so if they really needed to they could actually live on land um, um, you know when they're in the water once in a while they w would go up for a gulp of air um, So this guy's they're coming out of the woodworks so yeah so these uh, Bashirs actually grow up to um, about 30 inches and I know this this hundred gallon tank is is overcrowded right now and again it was not my idea to have this many fishes but again it was either rescue them or the owner was gonna dump them onto the grass and let them die so. Um, yeah, so what I've noticed in the past two weeks is that these plecos, they actually leave these Bashirs alone. Um, I know that some may think that these plecos may develop some kind of taste for the slime coating of these Bashirs, but I have not seen um, anything like that. So... So far so good, but I may have to upgrade my fish tank to, uh, you know, maybe 150, 200 gallon eventually because, you know, these Bashirs, they grow to be pretty big. So, but very interesting, very interesting uh, type of uh, species. Yeah, I've seen it where these plecos would be trying to eat these shrimp and the Bashirs would come up to their mouth and just snag the meat right, right out of the pleco's mouth. So, anyway, that was about six or seven shrimp that I had cut up that they've seemed to have finished already back for more that little guy and I know <clears throat> I'm not supposed to have gravel with these Bashirs but again it was not my choice I it was not planned to have Bashirs in this tank so um, yeah, they're going to have to adapt to uh, gravel. But Bashirs are, are mostly recommended to have in a sanded tank. And preferably dark sand versus the light, lighter sand that we normally see at the beach. And that is because the darker sand color would bring out the, the colors of these Bashirs. Um, I 
Yeah, so you'll also notice that I have two of these green pipes in here as well. Um, one is for the intake into the canister filter and one is for the um, the water going coming out the filtered water coming out of that canister and that canister filter was also um, inherited uh, from um, from my uh, tenant that had moved out again the the wife of the uh, the guy that was taking care of these fishes uh, um, you know she was throwing everything away she threw away like five or six fish tanks some were acrylic, some were glass. Um, I think the biggest one was about 50, 60 inches. Um, and she asked if I wanted any, but yeah, I just, I just don't have any more room at my house to store fish tanks and fish equipment. Like she threw away all the heaters. There was at least five heaters, submersible heaters. Um, but yeah, I only rescued the ones that I could, um, and the, um, the owner, the, the ex-owner of these Bashirs, the, the, he was actually feeding them feeder goldfish. Um, so, yeah, that is something I definitely do not want to do. Um, I don't like feeding, you know, live food to my fishes. And it's just dirty as the water and there it's just it has parasites. Um, so you'll see that my Jaguar cichlid, um, the tail of my Jaguar cichlid is, uh, is a bit torn. Um, kind of like, you know, the tail of a halibut when you net it. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the fin rot. Um, if you notice the water clarity, um, inside this fish tank is very clear. I got, I got two AC 110 hang on back filters and I got the canister filter going. So the water is very clean and water quality is beyond excellent. Um, so because this guy's tail is ripped from the most aggressive fish in the tank is that African cichlid right there. That African cichlid, the one in the back blue color. Um, that one likes to nip at this fish's tail. So every now and then, um, you know, this jaguar cichlid's gonna have ripped tail, but uh, fin, it's not gonna have fin rot because fin rot is caused by uh, three main reasons. Uh, the first one is poor water quality, not enough aeration, uh, not clean enough. Um, so that's one. Uh, two is if the fish is not getting enough nutrients, if it's not e if it's not able to find food and get the the, the, the nutrients that it needs to heal itself, uh, it could cause to fin rot. And then the third reason what causes fin rot is stress. So if the fish is stressed out and it's not going to eat, it's not going to have enough nutrients to heal itself. Um, so I just, I just want to say that, um, uh, you know, the halibuts that, uh, that some of the uh, some of the uh, anglers uh, from kayaks that net them, cause, uh, causing their tails to rip like this. Um, within three days, 
within three days uh, in a natural habitat in a excellent water quality and that if the halibut is eating getting enough nutrients and not stressed out um, the tail would actually grow back so in about three days um, I'm going to make another video or maybe I'll just wait three days include that video into this one and then um, I'll show you that the fins do heal and that um, you know that it's not going to lead to fin rot so um, I don't use any medication called Melifix or anything like that to help heal the, 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 the tail uh, I just don't like putting medication um, into my fish tank because honestly none of the other fishes have ripped well the aggressive one kind of does because sometimes these guys they fight back but um, yeah within three days within a week the uh, the tail would grow back uh, you know it, it would not heal completely back to normal but you'll start to see that you know the the, the tail would, would start to close up and start to heal nicely um, so uh, so yeah in about three days I'm gonna uh, do another recording a short little clip uh, showing the update of the tail and then uh, you guys can see that uh, you know uh, relate um, to halibuts um, that uh, for some of you I know that concerned about halibuts getting fin rot uh, rest assured uh, you know in a natural habitat um, it heals very quickly and this is this is not from you know Google or from anything I looked online it's actually as a fish keeper for nearly 40 years I uh, know it's actually it's been 40 years um, you know and, and, and I've had cichlids most of my fish keeping years that I see that the tails they they grow back they heal back nicely uh, within a week so anyway um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys do uh, please like and subscribe it'll really help out the channel um, I haven't been you know fishing for the past two weeks uh, because I've been busy uh, cleaning and fixing up the rental property to rent out to new tenants but um, hopefully this uh, weekend this Sunday I will be um, going fishing and gonna be testing out um, a uh, uh, you know a do-it-yourself uh, live well so you guys will hopefully see that in my next fishing video alright well thanks for watching guys we will see you in the next one